Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. So let's get started with another video. In this video, we'll just cover what is retrieval augmented generation. I have created this uh, nice architecture diagram as well to help you understand what this rag basically is. What is all this rag fuss about? So to understand that, first let's understand what we are doing when we are talking with ChatGPT, um, you know, on, on their website. We're essentially just sending a prompt to chat GPT and uh, it's able to give a response back to us. That's all. And over here, chat GPT is an LLM. Now, um, just like chat GPT, we have other LLMs as well. Uh, one is Gemini, it's provided by Google. And the other is Claude, it's provided by Anthropic. Just like that, we have alternatives to LLM models like BERT, again Google, OpenAI, which is chat GPT, Olama, which comes from Facebook, you have Claude, uh, which is Anthropic, and Gemini, which is again from Google. Just like this, you have multiple LLM models to choose from. And I think every day there are these uh, multiple LLM models that keep competing with each other to, to provide the best uh, solutions. So this is basically a simple, um, you know, chatting with LLM and getting a response. Now let's understand what is RAG, RAG-based LLMs. So this basically means retrieval augmented generation. And over here, essentially what's happening is when you're sending a prompt as a user, when you're sending prompt to chat GPT, along with the prompt, you're also giving it a context. So there are two things. The first is the prompt itself and the second is a context. So we're passing these two things to the chat bot. Now let's understand where this context is coming from. And this context basically is the crux of retrieval augmented generation. So let's say you have PDF documents and now we're talking, now we're saying that we have PDF documents and we want to get context from these PDF documents. So it's like you have this chatbot with you and then inside the data folder here, you have uh, some PDF. Let's say it's some, you know, company your company's internal use PDF, which is not for public. So if you ask any question to chat GPT about this internal secretive company PDF, then chat GPT will not be able to answer it because it, it has never seen that data before. However, when you create a rack based LLM, rack based chatbot, then you pass your data here as a PDF file. And then that data essentially uh, gives context to the chatbot. So that's what's happening. Now let's understand this architecture diagram. So you have PDF documents, then you use a library known as PyPDF loader, which basically loads PDF documents from your local machine. So from the local machine, it will load the PDF document and it will bring it into the uh, running Python program. Then there is something known as recursive character text splitter. This is, I believe it's a hugging face model. It basically helps in breaking down a PDF into small texts, multiple texts. So no matter how big the PDF is, it would be broken down into small texts. So that's what recursive character text splitter does. So now if you have a PDF, then basically the PDF is broken down into uh, recursive text, just like Hey, this is the first sentence of the PDF. This is the second sentence, third sentence, and then so on, nth sentence. So basically a PDF is broken down into sentences. That's what this function does, recursive character text splitter. Then there is something known as a sentence transformer, which is again a hugging face model. And what this does is it converts each of these uh, sentences into numerical representations. So, hey, this is a uh, first sentence of the PDF could be represented in numbers. So I believe it's mostly binary itself. So, So just like this, every sentence is broken down into numbers. The question is, why is it broken down into numbers? Why is it that we're converting words to numbers? Well, if you actually think about it, a computer will not be able to understand 
words directly like that. It has to convert the words to numbers, numerical format, and then using the numerical format is how the computer will be able to understand it. This is how even uh, natural language processing works, NLP. So just like this, you have your each sentence is converted into numerical representations. Now these numerical representations are known as vectors. So these uh, they generate embeddings and it's called as vectors and these vectors are uploaded into a vector database. Now vector database is a multi-dimensional database that stores vectors. That's all vector what vector database is. So here you see chunk and prepare metadata. So what it basically means is we are creating chunks of vectors like this. By chunks we mean we we are creating plural multiple uh vectors like this and we're uploading these vectors into the vector database now preparing metadata essentially means metadata is like additional information for that data so let's say this the first chunk of vectors we can give it an id equal to one this can be id equal to oops this can be id equal to two this can be ID equal to three. So we are assigning an identification number for each of this metadata, each of this uh, vector over here, each of this chunk of vector. So why are we doing that? Well, if we have an ID in our database, then imagine retrieval will become so much more powerful. You can retrieve based on ID and that's very powerful. So that's why um, even in industry standard, there is always metadata created for your chunks of vectors, and then it's uploaded into a vector database. Now, is MySQL Workbench a vector database? Is MongoDB a vector database? Well, yes and no. Um, all these uh, standard um, signature databases that we have worked with throughout our in software engineering lives, such as Oracle DB, MySQL, then uh, MySQL Workbench, then MS SQL and then uh, MongoDB and uh, Postgres SQL. All of these are standard SQLs for relational and non-relational databases. That's all. However, VectorDB is, I would say, everything. It's a multi-dimensional database and there are different database providers for this. So these are the some alternatives to vector database. Qdrint, Chroma, Redis, MongoDB. So Redis, we all know, is uh, used for caching purposes. However, Redis also provides a vector DB alternative. MongoDB is no SQL, but MongoDB also provides a vector DB alternative. Elasticsearch as well. So there are vector DBs uh, that are given and even multiple cloud uh, providers provide uh, vector DB. So if I do uh, AWS vector DB, then you have something known as Amazon Open Search. When I Google GCP vector DB, you should get Vertex AI, very popular. It's costly as well. <laughs> and then you have Azure Vector DB. So Azure has something known as Vector Search as well. So there are these multiple Vector DBs to choose from. This Vector DB essentially ends up giving uh, giving the context to the chatbot. So congratulations, we have um, basically taken a PDF file, broken the PDF file into sentences broke and converted each sentence into numerical representation. And then for each numerical representation, we have assigned an ID for it, basically calling it, uh, giving it metadata. And then we're uploading all of these vectors into a vector DB. You can choose whichever vector DB you want. And then after that, this vector DB provides the context. Now, when I say it provides context, this is not uh, this is just a way of saying it that it makes the LLM like chat GPT understand uh, what data is present in the PDF. Now, um, here is our chatbot. We had discussed this at the start of the video. Um, actor will send a prompt, then the prompt will send a response back. Now the prompt will have additional data to read from and understand the prompt and give even better results. That is RAG. So now let's take an example of. Now this is the prompt which is coming from the user. Hey, what is 
in the first line of the PDF. And then in the response, what happens is um, this basically this sentence, first of all, uh, is converted into a numerical format by the LLM itself. And then this numerical format is currently present here inside this LLM, inside this, this area. And this numerical number is then compared with the different uh, vectors present in the vector DB. So this vector is compared with these multiple vectors over here. And then the shortest distance between this vector to the vectors over here, one of the vectors over here is, is found out using something known as cosine similarity. And this cosine similarity is what gives the con uh, is what gives the closest context. So you can define your cosine similarity with um, k nearest to two or three. So this basically shows the top two, three most closest vectors to this vector over here. And this vector is essentially this question, which is this prompt. And that's how you get a response from the rag, which gives the most strongest response closest to the PDF. So I'll start my series where I will I have created the chatbot. I'll show it in the next video. And here we will be using Gemini, Gemini API, and we'll be using uh, QDrint Cloud, QDrint for vector DB. So stay tuned and here we'll continue our rag series. So thank you very much. I hope this video was informative. Bye.